Hey, it's time for another Indiana Jones review. It's Morphin' Time. Hello, this is Sanit here, and on today's video, we're continuing the adventure with some more Indiana Jones figures. We got three retros and three adventure series, all based on The Last Crusade and all exclusive to different stores. All right, so here is the retro Last Crusade Indiana Jones. Uh, so similar to the other packaging, it had the Adventures of Indiana Jones logo, and that's in Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. Uh, of course, his name there. This was a fan channel exclusive, as well as an Amazon exclusive. You get from fan channel retailers and Amazon, so basically your online shops. It's not popping up in Walmart Target. A little weird, considering the other two we'll look at. Uh, but a nice shot of Indy here on the motorcycle uh, from Last Crusade. And on the back, you can see the three Last Crusade figures we're looking at. Indy, Sala, and Dr. Henry Jones Sr. So you got that going on. But let's crack open the Last Crusade Indy and take a look at him. All right, so here is Last Crusade Indy in his retro form. Uh, he looks pretty cool. Uh, what's neat is the bag is included, which we didn't have on the previous ones. Uh, but you can see they actually did do a new torso with the uh, tie, so it matches his look from Last Crusade. He's still got the easy-to-lose-your-accessories uh, hand, which means if you give him the Holy Grail and he can just, like, chuck it. Um, anyways, the, this, the action gimmick's fine, but it also, uh, you know, it's just kind of a pain in a lot of ways. Uh, he's still got those weird... Uh, H hips in the front, V hips in the back thing, you know, so there's that. Uh, but other than that, I mean, he's fine. I think this one is kind of like a, well, you know, it finishes out the trio of indies uh, more so than, than doing anything else. It does still have the hook for the whip there, um, but it does come with the gun. You still get the same pistol, same pistol there, same holster as well, uh, where if you put it in correctly, it won't fit, but if you put it in backwards, it'll kind of hold there sort of, uh, which is neat. And then you do get the uh, True Grail, which is nice. So, you know, there's your MacGuffin of the movie, so you get the Holy Grail there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's bring in the other indies. Uh, it's really not much to say about Retro Indie at this point. I mean, he does have a lighter color jacket. All these have the same exact legs, the same exact head, uh, some different shading going on. But here's Raiders Indie and Temple Indie. Uh, Temple Indy definitely does feel the most unique out of the three. Uh, these two feel very similar. This is kind of a, you know, not as clean of a jacket look, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, but the nice part is that if you want to, like, you know, take this Indy and make him, like, you know, your Raiders Indy, your perfect one, you just give him the bag here. Boom. There you go. Now you got your full uh, Indy setup. Or if you don't want that and you like Raiders or a, Temp or a Crusade Indy, jeez mixing up the names. You want Crusade Indy to be your Indy. You can take the whip from the Raiders one and give that to him uh, there, like that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, at this point, it is our third Indiana Jones, uh, so it's not anything like revolutionary, but it's nice that we at least got an Indy. I actually kind of like the way that one turned out uh, with the bag and everything. Uh, but yeah, it's nice to get our Indy in three different forms for the three different movies they're covering. Uh, sadly, no Crystal Skull or Dial of Destiny indie happening, but uh, it is nice to have at least the original trio. All right, so next up is Sala. Now, Sala is interesting because, uh, first of all, he is a Target exclusive, so if you're looking for him, you have to look at Target. Um, they did not do a Last Crusade Sala in Adventure Series, and they did not do a Raider Sala in Retro. Even though the original Kenner line did have a Raiders version of Sala, uh, we did get just the uh, Last Crusade version. So I'm glad that we got something neat and unique out of this line uh, before it vanished. Uh, but yeah, you do get a nice uh, look at Sala there. You know, standard sort of packaging at this point. You know, it's a Kenner retro card, uh, but a nice image of Sala there. So let's take a look at him. All right, so here is Sala. While I would have liked to have also seen his Raiders version, I do think he gives this line some distinction by giving him the Last Crusade look. He's got uh, the fez, he's got the tie. He looks pretty good. I think it's got, a, it's got a bit of a likeness to him, uh, for sure. It's definitely in that Kenner retro style. Uh, he has just the standard articulation uh, with the big old H-hip, V-hip thing, and then the shoulders, and then the head. No action gimmick, which is fine. I don't really need action gimmicks in these. Uh, but he looks pretty good, and he does come with the uh, pistol here. So you can just fit the pistol in his hand, maybe. Uh, the pistol handle is just way too thick for these figures' hands. And uh, there you go. So boom, there is Sala. He's got a pistol. He looks pretty cool. 
Uh, we'll put them alongside, of course, uh, Crusade Indy here. You know, there you go. Scaling wise, they're pretty good. It's nice to have Sala in some form, and it kind of gives them some distinction. Plus, if you do collect the vintage line, you do have a reason to pick up uh, at least, you know, some of these retros because they did make new stuff in the second batch of them. And then our last retro figure for Last Crusade, and as far as we can tell, our last retro figure, period, Dr. Henry Jones Sr., good old Sean Connery here. Uh, great image of him with the umbrella uh, iconic scene in the movie, but he does not come with an open umbrella. He comes with a closed one because he kind of carries that around for more of the movie. Um, you can see, you know, Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones, Dr. Henry Jones Sr. Um, so yeah, all kinds of cool stuff here. Uh, let's get him open. I think he's going to be our last retro figure of the line. So let's see if he was a worthy addition. And then lastly, here's Henry Jones Sr. Uh, he's, you know, looking pretty nice. He's got his glasses, his beard, all that good stuff. I mean, it looks like a retro. It looks like it was made back then, which I think is really cool. And I think that's the whole point. Um, but yeah, he's got standard articulation, shoulders, head, hips, knees, that sort of thing. Nothing, nothing crazy. He does come with, of course, the umbrella. If you want him to hold it, you know, he kind of carried it in the middle a lot in the movie, but you can kind of have him hold it by this handle. Um, so he's got his he's got his umbrella with him, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I mean, we did only get three figures for Last Crusade, but at least we got, you know, Sala, we got Henry Jones Sr., and we got Henry Jones Jr. Uh, so you've got, you know, your three kind of main characters, I guess, your main hero characters. No villains, but uh, just like with the Temple of Doom figures, where we got, like, Indy... And short round, I kind of wish we'd gotten Willie as well. Um, so you get, you know, those two. And then zooming out a little bit, you can see with the whole collection gathered, uh, it looks pretty good. I mean, it's definitely a sampling of the figures. Uh, it's kind of a bummer they didn't remake everybody from the Raiders line. Like, we didn't get the Sala, we didn't get, like, the uh, German Soldier or uh, the Cairo Swordsman. Uh, but it was nice that they did give us some, you know, figures that could fit into the vintage line if you wanted to with the two temple figures, the three crusade figures. And yeah, we could have gotten Crystal Skull and Dial of Destiny to kind of rule it out. But these would be the movies in the era of Kenner. So I think there's kind of some intention there. It is a bummer we didn't have more villains besides German Mechanic, Belloc, and Tote. Um, you know, there was no Muller Rom, which there isn't in any part of the line, which is leading to some speculation slash confirmed information that they can't make Muller Rom. Uh, there is no Donovan or Elsa, so it kind of, you know, Marion's the only woman here. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it's it's a cool little line. I think they could have done more with it. It's kind of a bummer we only got 10 figures. It's also a bummer that all of these guys in the back were retail. Last Crusade Indy was essentially retail because he was available at every online retailer. Uh, but then all the other four guys were Target exclusives, and your mileage may have varied whether you found them at all or if you found them in mass quantities on clearance. So... It was kind of a bit of a messy line, but I am grateful for what we have. Though, yeah, they definitely could have done a little bit more with this. Um, especially because, you know, throwing in German Mechanic, that's cool. But if, you know, it was him or, like, a more named character, I would have taken a more named character. Uh, but it's 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 alright. You know, this wasn't going to be my primary indie line. And at the end of the day, I think I'm happy with what we got. Though I, you know, would have liked to have seen more from it. Switching gears over to Adventure Series, we have Indiana Jones Professor, or just Professor Jones. Um, this is pretty cool because we do get a Professor look for Indy. Uh, on the side here, you can see they kind of lumped it in with Series 1 of Adventure Series. And then we got some nice artwork of, uh, you know, Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones. So you can see, you know, nice portrait. Then you got him teaching in his class, giving a lecture. Here he is putting his glasses away so that Hasbro has an excuse not to make glasses. And then uh, it is Indy and Elsa opening the tomb of the Grail Knight there. So that's pretty cool. And then on the back, of course, we have our standard packaging. Here's our first time looking at the Indiana Jones and Last Crusade logo. There's Indy. There's his accessories. All kinds of cool stuff. Usual packaging. Now, uh, Professor Indy here was a fan channel exclusive, even though he was a announced as a Walmart exclusive. I think Walmart dropped the line before it began. Never saw any indie toys in Walmart. Um, but yeah, he was originally a Walmart exclusive, then they switched him to Fan Channel and Amazon, so he was pretty available from most retailers. But let's take a look at Professor Indiana Jones. So here's Professor Indiana Jones. Uh, head sculpt wise, he looks pretty good. I mean, that's a decent Harrison Ford there uh, with the nice haircut. He's got the bow tie and he's got the uh, vest under the jacket, which is pretty nice. That's all I got. Uh, it, basically, it is a pretty basic suit-bodied figure. Uh, there's really nothing 
spectacular about it. It would have been nice to see him, you know, either with removable glasses or glasses, uh, you know, sculpted to the head, because that's, you know, kind of an iconic look of when he's doing his professor stuff. He does wear his glasses. There are no glasses included. Kind of a bummer, because uh, it makes him very, very similar to Club Obi-Wan Indy. Uh, these feel almost like the same figure. Uh, it's the same bow tie sculpt. It's the same suit body, like down to the shoes. Sure, they're painted differently. Uh, it's also the same head sculpt. Um, I, I, you know, the weird part is I think the only thing different between these two sculpt-wise is the jacket and the vest, because this is obviously, it's a, a six-button vest here, whereas this is a four-button, um, and the shirt is actually the same mold, because even though they didn't paint that button, it's still sculpted there, like that button sculpted there where it's painted there. Uh, the bow tie necks look about the same, the heads are the same. The hands, the arms, the pants, the shoes. Like, these are basically the same figure. Um, it kind of makes sense, you know, considering this was like a Target exclusive. This was planned as a Walmart. Uh, so you wouldn't see them at the same store at the same time. But they feel very similar in person. Uh, and I know that this was, you know, good mold reuse since a lot of the stuff in this line couldn't be reused. And it is an iconic look to have Indiana Jones as Professor Jones. But again, if they just included those glasses, I think this would have really made this figure spectacular. I think it would have been a really nice addition, whereas, you know, it does feel a little bit samey to what I've already reviewed before. I'm not even going to go over the articulation here because we've already done that. Uh, the saving grace with this figure is its accessories. So first of all, you get uh, the Grail Diary in its wrapped, uh, you know, paper envelope with the string and the mailing address and everything, which is how his dad sent it to him in the movie. And he can hold it uh, in the more open hand. So there you go. He's got, the, uh, he's got the diary as a package. Pretty cool. Uh, you do get the bone with the cloth wrapped around it, dipped in the, the oil, and then lit on fire for the torch as uh, him and Elsa were exploring the cavern that had the tomb of uh, one of the Grail Knights. So you've got that, which looks pretty good. I think that's a pretty good accessory. And also with him not having the glasses on, it would make sense for this scene in particular uh, because he did not wear the glasses there. It would have been cool. Maybe they should have just done a swappable head. And then the last accessory is the shield uh, for the Grail Knight that was in the tomb. It's really nicely weathered on the back. It's nicely sculpted. You could put it over his arm, but they didn't really do anything like that. Uh, they show it in the promo images on his arm. But he really laid in the tomb with the knight. Um, the biggest thing was getting the engraving, uh, do the rubbing of the engraving on the shield to help find the Grail. Um, so it's got kind of the sculpted detail, the painted weathering. I think it looks really, really nice. And it's a pretty nice piece uh, overall. I think it's it's pretty cool. Uh, but other than that, yeah, if you're looking to skip figures in this line, I think this one's easily skippable. Uh, but much like the Club Obi-Wan Indy, the accessories really are cool and scene-specific. Though I think the ones that came with the uh, the Club Obi-Wan Indy were a little bit better than the Professor Indy uh, in general. But, uh, of course, this guy goes well with other figures, um, first of all, here he is next to, uh, Raiders Indy. Yay, they're different. Um, but yeah, he does go well with other figures, such as our next adventure series. Next up, Walter Donovan, arguably the main villain of the movie. He is the one that sends everybody on the quest for the Grail. Uh, similar thing where he's got the Series 1 figures, uh, cross sell there. There's Walter Donovan, nice shot of him with his pistol, and then nice shot of him after he tried to drink from the fake Grail. I love the gruesome stuff in indie movies. And a nice portrait of him there. Uh, on the back, of course, accessories and all that. Now, Donovan, of course, uh, just like Professor Indy, was announced as a Walmart exclusive, but was released as a fan channel and Amazon exclusive. So, pretty easy to get. Much better than if he was a Walmart exclusive. Walter Donovan. He is, you know, he's our bad guy. I think he turned out pretty cool. He is using some similar parts, like the arms uh, and the hands are reused from Indy, uh, from that suit body. Uh, but the legs are different. We'll talk about that in a moment. But he's got this nice, unique jacket. He's got a nice face sculpt that looks really spot on to the actor from the movie, which I think is really great. I believe that guy was also in some other Lucasfilm stuff, too. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's got, you know, kind of your standard articulation, your shoulders, your elbows, your biceps, your wrists, your heads. Uh, there's some stuff in the torso, and then he's got double-jointed knees, and you're like, what the heck? Um, so, interestingly enough, uh, there is... We'll look at the, the foot stamp here. It does still say that this was manufactured in Vietnam. I did want to point that out. But these legs are actually 
sort of sculpt reused. Uh, I can't say they are um, reused reuse of the same mold because of what we'll look at in a moment. But the sculpt reuse and the fact that you have visible pins here uh, actually means that he's reusing parts from Grand Admiral Thrawn from Star Wars The Black Series, um, which is a line I don't talk about it much. Uh, but Thrawn here had the same, you know, pinned knee system, though it did have a lower pin that was black to match the black boot a little bit better. Uh, but you can actually see these share a sculpt. But if we look at Thrawn's foot, he's actually made in China. So this is something interesting I've been trying to sort of surmise an answer on because it's been having a Power Rangers Lightning Collection, where there is shared sculpting or shared tooling, but they're produced in two different factories, which, you know, from what I know, you wouldn't be shipping a mold, um, you know, cross-country because that would be more expensive than just casting a new mold. So I wonder if maybe the Indy line was planned to be produced in China, but they produced it in Vietnam instead, and so they were going to reuse the Thrawn legs for this and then just kept the sculpt as it was. Because, I mean, they work. It's not like it's noticeable. Um, it definitely fits. Um, it's just really strange because they're not exactly the same mold. Uh, there's just some little bit minor differences, and they were produced in different factories. But he does share sculpting with a Star Wars figure, so there you go. Um, the other cool thing, too, is that he has accessories that I think are pretty useful. He's got his uh, pistol, which is for an iconic scene in the movie uh, with another gray-haired man. Um, so that's pretty cool overall. You also do get uh, the actual tablets... This tablet was the incomplete uh, information to find the grail. As you can see, it's got some nice paint weathering to fill in all the sculpt. It's all sculpted. It's pretty flat on the back, but this is the uh, grail tablet. And in the movie, the grail uh, shield was the rest of what was on that tablet. So you can see how it kind of lines up there, that sort of idea. So it's pretty cool. We have the two different pieces of the grail map. This is kind of a soft plastic too, um, but it's really cool. You can have them hold it, but eh, what's the point? And then the other cool thing is that, of course, he comes with the uh, ultimate thing of his downfall, the fake grail. Uh, so there's many grails, and we will get to see more grails. That's why there's a little bit of an indent on the bottom here. Um, you get a nice fake grail there, the one that he did drink from. And, of course, when he drunk from the grail, disastrous consequences of his choosing poorly... Uh, yes, he comes with a decaying head. This is uh, from the scene where he horrifically dies after drinking from the fake grail. Um, it was where he aged himself into dust, essentially. So you can see it's got the likeness as well. It looks really spot on to that makeup and that practical effect. And it's got a nice paint wash as well. Just add that with Tote's melting face into the pile of accessories for this line where there's gruesome deaths for characters. And our last figure today is going to be Chasm. Uh, Chasm was one of the protectors of the Grail. Uh, he was part of a cool group. He showed up in this nice pinstripe suit originally, and that's the look we got here. Once again, cross sells for Series 1. Um, some really nice uh, work here where he's buttoning up his jacket. Here he is uh, with the boat from the scene where the boat is getting destroyed by the rudder, and Indy's trying to get some information out of him. And there's a nice shot of him there as well. Uh, pretty cool because I don't think this is a character that's ever had a figure before, so I always appreciate that. Um, plus, he looks really, really neat. He was an exclusive to Target. He was the second Target exclusive. Uh, in fact, Target got an exclusive for each movie. They got the Club Obi-Wan indie for Temple of Doom. They got Chasm for Last Crusade. And then they also got the Map Room indie for Raiders of the Lost Ark. So, let's take a look at Chasm and wrap out this video. So, here is Chasm. Uh, this is pretty cool because this is a character... I think most people kind of forgot about. I mean, he doesn't make a huge impact in Last Crusade, but he is in several key sequences of the movie, and so it's really nice for him to get a figure. I mean, he is mostly suit reuse, uh, same arms, same legs, new jacket. Uh, I do like the new jacket because they could have used, I mean, if they were going to be cheap and have the open jacket, which wouldn't be accurate, they could have reused this jacket, but they didn't. Uh, they actually sculpted a new jacket for this figure, which I think is really cool. Uh, what's also really cool is the actor that played Chasm also got a copy of this figure, so I always love when that happens. Uh, the hat is not removable, uh, as with a lot of hats in this line, it is just stuck on there so that way it looks more natural, which is fine. Uh, he had two different looks in the movie. There was this one, which he had towards the beginning when he's pursuing Dr. Jones, and on the boat fight, which actually, when uh, you look at the movie, this, uh, this is kind of like the face-off right here, because this was the look Indy had when he was fighting Chasm on the boat. So, pretty cool. Uh, and in general, I think that he makes for a nice-looking figure. Uh, some of the paint applications, I think they did photo reel, uh, the inkjet printing thing for the legs, because it's a little bit, 
It's a little bit less clean on the legs than it is uh, the jacket, but I think it looks really good overall. Uh, and pretty good for his first time figure. Uh, accessories wise, he does come with his standard pistol, which he carried in that scene. It does look a little small in his hand uh, because they are reusing Indy's hand for this. Um, it just, I wish they would have sculpted it a little bit bigger because there's just like too much empty space there. Uh, he does come with the uh, more automated uh, multi firing weapon here. Um, I don't know guns, guys. I really don't. Uh, so apologies. I'm not researching guns for an action figure review. I'm just gonna go with, this is that thing where he fired a lot of bullets at our heroes and stuff. Um, so you got that, um, he can hold it, he can hold it pretty good. And this matches this look uh, fairly well, I think. Uh, it looks pretty good too. I like that it gives him kind of you know a two-handed option. And then to roll it all out, uh, he does come with the rifle. Now, what's interesting is that this rifle, he didn't actually use while wearing the suit. This is the rifle he had when he was wearing the all-white costume towards the end of the movie. Uh, so it's kind of a weird inclusion, but it's also kind of nice. It also does give you some nice uh, 112 scale uh, weapons right there for other figures if you need them, uh, which is pretty good. So he's kind of a nice little weapons pack as well. Uh, I think in general, though, I'm going to probably keep him with this because the, uh, the pistol just looks too tiny in his hand, uh, even though I think it, you know, kind of looks cleaner. Uh, the pistol looks too tiny. And you can hold this pretty good. I do love the uh, the way that they did the wrists on the indie figures because it works pretty great. But there he is. There's Chasm. And that is our Last Crusade exclusives. So here's the three Last Crusade Adventure Series figures together, the exclusives. I think Donovan does look a little tall, but he was a bit taller in the movie. And that's because he's using the Thrawn legs with those double joints. But I think it works out scale-wise. I think they look pretty good together. We're also going to be getting more Last Crusade figures in Wave 3 with Indy and Henry Jones Sr., the Grail Knight, and Elsa. So look forward to that in the future. Um, but yeah, these are the three Last Crusade figures we got initially as exclusives, and I look forward to reviewing Wave 3 whenever it comes out. So that does it for this video for Indiana Jones. Uh, if you do like Indiana Jones, check out my other videos if you haven't, and stay tuned as I will be reviewing the rest of the Adventure series. We're done with the retros, we've covered all of them now, so it's just up to finishing out the Adventure series. And I might as well just announce the plan now. The plan is to do a video similar to this where we do the Raiders of the Lost Ark exclusives. That'll be Map Room Indie, Cairo Indie, uh, probably the Temple Escape Indie, and then the Belloc and uh, Brody 2-pack. So that'll be like one video. Well, before then, we'll probably have a Wave 2 video, which will be Adventure Wave 2 with the, uh, the Skull Temple uh, build and artifact. And then after that, uh, after both of those will be a wave three video, which contains the third and final wave of the line. Because as far as we know, this is all we're getting. Hasbro has not confirmed we're getting any more. They haven't announced any more. And they've kind of said, you know, oh, hey, we want to do more, but we'll see how the future holds. So I've kind of planned out those are the next three videos. They'll be coming out sometime between now and the end of the year, just depending on when I get them. I think bundling them together is a good way for me to cover this line because most of these videos don't do that well. Uh, so we're just going to keep bundling them as needed. So if you enjoyed this, hit the like button, hit subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss out on those future indie videos. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what your favorite figure from this batch was. And also be sure to check out my live streams here on this channel Mondays at 5 p.m. Eastern and my Discord server, which you can find a link to in the description below which will link you to the Discord server and join the community and all the cool discussions and topics we have going on there. You can also find my social media, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, as long as those are still applicable, at SoundOut12. You can find my awesome graphic designer on our Discord server at DarkClaw643. And you can check out Hero Club at HeroClub.com for movie news and more. And until next time, this is SoundOut saying goodbye.